Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today's video is continuing the subject of learning geology which is a series that I'm starting up where I teach you geology. So in the past video I talked about the three different rock types. In today's video we're going to be focusing on igneous rocks. So for anyone who's interested in geology and learning geology this video series will be for you. So this is the second part. Uh, again, the first part was on the three different rock types, so that's metamorphic, igneous, and sedimentary. In this video, we will start to focus in on igneous rocks, and that's how this whole video series will go. I'll slowly kind of progress, and we'll get deeper and deeper into geology and get on more advanced subjects. So today, we're going to be talking about igneous rocks, mainly intrusive igneous rocks because there's two different types. So there's intrusive and extrusive. Intrusive cools within the earth and extrusive erupts from volcanoes. We'll be focusing on intrusive rocks and the volcanics will be mentioned here and there, but that's for another video. So let's get started. All right, so igneous rocks. So real quick again, there's two different types of igneous rocks. You have intrusive and extrusive igneous rocks. So intrusive again, cools underground and extrusive erupts at the surface. So we've already talked about this in the previous video of the three rock types. However, there are different compositions of igneous rocks that you should know about if you're gonna learn some geology. So this is where things get a little bit more complicated. So the composition of an igneous rock applies both to intrusive and extrusive. And the composition is the makeup of the mineral content that makes up that igneous rock. So when it comes to igneous rocks, they're made up of what they call silicate minerals. So examples of silicate minerals uh, are like quartz, feldspar, micas, biotites, hornblende, amphibole, olivine, and more. So those are just some of the silicate minerals that make up different igneous rocks. And depending on the type of igneous rock, which is controlled by the composition, you'll have different minerals that make up different igneous rocks. Now when it comes to igneous silicate minerals, they divide it up into two different groups. And when it comes to rocks, it seems like they divide everything into two different groups. But anyways, there are two different groups of silicate minerals when it comes to igneous rocks. You have your felsic minerals, and then you have your mafic minerals. Felsic minerals, examples of those are your uh, quartz minerals, your feldspar minerals, and mica, muscovite. And then an example of your mafic minerals are your hornblends, your amphiboles, olivine, and so on. Now when it comes to these two different mineral types of silicates, your felsic and your mafix, one good way to distinguish, it, distinguish them is your felsic are lighter colored minerals typically, and your mafic minerals are darker. So, if you have a rock that is made, mainly made up of quartz, feldspars, and micas, you're going to have more of a felsic composition rock. And if you have a rock that has mostly biotite, hornblende, and amphiboles, and maybe some olivine, uh, you'll have more of a mafic rock. All right, so your silicate minerals, your felsic and your mafic, will control the composition types of igneous rocks, depending on the amount of volume of the different types of minerals that are present in the rock. So real quickly, there are four different basic types of compositions, igneous compositions, which separate them into different groups by name. So, for example, you'll have a granitic composition, an andesitic composition, a basaltic, mafic composition, and then you'll have an ultramafic composition. And this all is determined by the mineral content that is found in these rocks. Another way they group them is by felsic, mafic, and intermediate. To help you better understand how this works, they have igneous composition charts. Uh, if I find one, I'll put one in the description. You can click on it there and find it. Uh, if it's not there, just look up igneous composition chart if you're interested here. So back to the composition types, granitic, andesitic, basaltic, and ultramafic. A granitic composition is going to lean more into the felsic side, and a basalt and ultramafic is going to lead into, of course, the mafic side. And andesitic is your intermediate, meaning it's right in the middle between the two. And this is all determined by the mineral content. So if you look at your igneous composition chart, if you found one, so if you look over at the granitic composition, you'll see on the left of the chart, you'll see a percentage by volume. So this is the amount of minerals that make up this granitic rock by volume. So a granitic rock will have more felsic minerals like potassium feldspar and quartz. 
a basalt igneous rock will have more amphiboles and hornblende, which are your ultra, which are your mafic minerals. So if you're looking at this chart, you got your four different basic compositions, and then you'll have, it, hopefully the chart shows you, you'll have your intrusive and extrusive type. So an intrusive granitic composition will be a granite, and an extrusive granitic composition will be a rhyolite. And then when it comes to your andesitic composition, your intrusive andesitic composition is named diorite, and your extrusive dire, your extrusive andesitic composition is called andesite. And your basaltic igneous intrusive is called gabbro, and your extrusive is called basalt. Again, extrusive erupts out of a volcano, intrusive cools deeply below the surface. And then there's your ultramafic, of course, which is not extremely common on Earth today. All right, so I wanna talk about igneous rock textures. So I've always said you have your coarse grain and then your fine grain, and intrusive rocks are gonna be more coarse grained, and extrusive rocks, which are your lavas, erupted from volcanoes, are gonna be more fine grained. But they have uh, different, more scientific names for these. So when it comes to an extrusive rock, they call the texture a thaneritic texture, which just means it's a coarse-grained igneous rock. So instead of saying that's a coarse-grained igneous rock, you can instead say that is a thaneritic igneous rock. Now, when it comes to extrusive rocks, it is called anthranitic, which means a fine-grained texture. So the same rule applies. So instead of saying this is a fine-grained rock, you can instead say this is a anthronitic igneous rock. So here is another igneous rock, and this has kind of a, mi a mixture of both different types of textures. If you look, you can see these large uh, individual minerals, so it's coarse grained, but it also has a fine grained uh, matrix in here, so it's both at the same time. This is what they call a porphyritic texture. Since igneous Intrusive rocks cool deeply below the Earth's surface. It allows the mineral grains to cool slowly over time, which allows them to get quite large, which is your thaneritic texture. When it comes to extrusive rocks, since they're erupted from a volcano, the minerals cool very quickly because they're exposed to air temperature, so you get an anthranitic texture. In this case, what happens is your igneous rock starts to cool slowly underground, so you start getting minerals that start to slowly crystallize out as the magma cools. But something happens, and this igneous rock gets shot up towards the surface at a quick rate. So, a porphyritic textured rock can either be an intrusive or an extrusive. If it's an extrusive, it'll be a porphyritic lava, and if it's an intrusive, it'll be an intrusive porphyritic uh, intrusion. So, if this was an extrusive porphyritic, it was erupted from a volcano, and if it was intrusive, they have another term, what they call subvolcanic, meaning it got close enough to the surface to cool quickly, but it never made it out of the surface and erupted from a volcano, which means it could have cooled either at a very shallow depth within the Earth's crust, or it erupted from a volcano. And then finally, a pegmatite texture, and if you've watched my videos before, you've heard me talk about this a lot, and you've seen it a lot, but a pegmatite is also an igneous intrusive rock. What separates it from other igneous rocks is how coarse-grained the minerals are in the igneous rock. So pegmatites have very large minerals, larger than normal igneous rock minerals. All right, so now that you know the different textures and the different types of minerals that make up these rocks, it's time to uh, show you different examples of igneous rocks. So these are both igneous intrusive rocks. How do you tell? One, you can see the individual minerals, which means it's coarse grained, because the minerals had to have cooled slowly and able to get to that size. So this means it's an intrusive rock, and the texture would be thaneritic. Now, as you can tell, the color-wise and texture-wise is very different, because these are two different compositions of igneous intrusive rock. So how do you tell what composition they are? It's, and the way you tell is the volume of mineral content within the rock. So if you look at this rock here compared to this one, you can see this rock is much wider 
has much of a lighter color and this rock is much darker and, than the other one which means if you remember the two different types of minerals your felsic and mafic minerals your felsic minerals have more of a lighter color and your mafic minerals have more of a darker color which means this rock has more felsic minerals by volume than this rock because this rock has more mafic minerals by volume so just doing a comparison like this if you're out in the field will help you a lot to distinguish what you're working with here now if you really want to find out what kind of igneous rock you have you look at the individual minerals so let's get closer here so if you you can compare this rock to the igneous uh, composition chart if you found one online so if you look here i can see little bits of quartz i can see your plagioclast feldspar which is your calcium and sodium rich feldspars i can see some horn blend in there and i can also see some biotite i do not see hardly any if at all any potassium feldspar which is more of a pink red color so by looking at this rock it's not quite a granitic composition and it's more of an andesitic composition but not quite either so it's kind of right on the line so in this case as i as i mentioned before you have four different types of igneous rocks there are actually smaller subcategories so if you have an igneous rock that is right on the line for example this for example this one's right on the line of an andesitic to a granite composition this is what they would call possibly a granodiorite because it's right on the line or close to the line of a granite and andesitic composition and since it's an intrusive it's kind of a combination of both names granite and diorite granodiorite all right so let's look at this rock here and this rock has a much higher concentration of by volume of mafic minerals I can see lots of, again, uh, horn blend, mostly horn blend. I hardly see any biotite. There is just a little bit in there, it looks like, really, really tiny stuff. And then you have your plagioclast feldspar. So I can already tell you that this is an andesitic composition. So this would be diorite. And in the case of the porthyritic, it's the same thing. We have some horn blend in there, which is your darker mafic mineral. You have these little white minerals here. This is your plagioclast feldspar. And then you have this fine grained matrix. So I'm gonna say this is a andesitic porthyritic rock. Now I said I wasn't gonna talk about extrusive rocks too much, but I, I might as well real quick here. These are, have the same mineral composition. Actually, roughly these three rocks roughly have the same mineral compositions. Not 100%, but close enough. Now. Here is your intrusive, and this is your extrusive, and this is your porthyritic. So this is the one that would cool slowly underground. This is the one that's like in between, and this is your lava. So this is your extrusive, your porthyritic, and your intrusive. So your thaneritic texture, anthranitic texture, and your porthyritic texture. Just to give you an idea. All right, so here's a look at an igneous rock here an igneous intrusion. So this is an igneous dike, or it looks like a dike. So here we have the host rock, and then here we have the actual intrusion. If you look really closely, this intrusion is very coarse grained, and it's more coarse grained than normal. So this is a pegmatite. And not only a pegmatite, it's a pegmatite dike. And if we look at this pegmatite, you can see it's made up of quartz and plagioclast feldspars. There's also little bits of uh, potassium feldspars here and there as well. All right, so we have this rock here. We have this dark colored rock, and we have this colored rock here. This is the host rock, and this is the igneous rock, which has intruded between the host rock. So this is a dike, and looking at the rock, you can see the individual minerals. So this is a coarse grained rock, so we know it's an intrusive rock. And looking at the minerals real closely, I can see the white mineral, which is your uh, sodium-rich or calcium-rich plagioclast feldspars. I can see some quartz in there, as well as some hornblende. And here we have a very interesting pegmatite. If you check this out right here, that's like a very large concentration of what appears to be a hornblende. So it's almost like a big, solid hornblende mineral crystal within this pegmatite, which is very nice. And you got another one 
on the other side right here. Very nice. All right, so this will conclude the video on igneous intrusive rocks. I hope you all were able to understand my uh, ex explanations of the different formations, the compositions, and the mineral content that groups these igneous rocks into different groups and gives them the different names. So I hope you all enjoyed it. If you have any comments or any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll try to get to them. If you have any questions on the topic of igneous rocks or any, any, any questions for that matter. But I hope you all enjoyed the video. This will conclude it for today. And I hope you're all having a good day and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care.